Today I've got a nice advanced calculus problem that comes from the Southeastern European Mathematical Olympiad. So this is an undergraduate math contest. So we want to start with a continuous function from the interval 0, 1 to the real numbers. Although, as you'll see, it doesn't really matter that we've got 0, 1 here. All we need is a closed interval. Next, we're going to define recursively a sequence of functions. We'll set f sub 0 equal to f, and then f n plus 1 of x will be equal to the integral from 0 to x of f of n, f n of t dt. And I should say that this is for values of x between 0 and 1. So that means we're defining this entire system on the interval 0 to 1. Then our goal is to find a closed form for the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of fn of x. And this is going to be on the interval 0 to 1. So implicitly inside of this is to show that this converges for all x on the interval 0 to 1. And that's what we're going to start with. So like I just said, we're going to start with convergence. And a big hint for how to start proving convergence is the fact that we have a continuous function to start with, f, on a closed interval. So that means by the extreme value theorem, we have some number m, so this is going to be a real number, that bounds our function f. So in other words, we have this is such that the absolute value of f of x is less than or equal to m for all x on our interval 0 to 1. And now hopefully we can use this to bound all of these functions f sub n in some way. Maybe they won't be bound by a constant, but they'll be bound by another function themselves. So let's explore f sub 1. So let's notice that f sub 1 of x in absolute values, well, that's going to be equal to the integral from 0 to x of f of x dx in absolute values. But then there's a standard result that says you can bring this uh, absolute value inside of the integral if you create an inequality. So this is essentially the triangle inequality. So we have the integral from 0 to x of the absolute value of x dx. But now the absolute value of x is always less than or equal to m. So this is less than or equal to m times the integral from 0 to x dx. In other words, m times x. So that means we bound f sub 1 above by our linear function m times x. And now we'll play the game again. So let's look at f sub 2 of x. So the absolute value of it will be less than or equal to the integral from 0 to x of the absolute value of f sub 1 of x. Again, I just kind of skipped this first step. But notice that's less than or equal to m times the integral from 0 to x of, in this case, it will be t dt. I realize that all of these should have been t's. But now we can take the antiderivative, plug in the m points, and we'll see that this is equal to m times x squared over 2. And then next, we can show that the function f sub 3, its absolute value is bound above by m times x sub 3 over 3 factorial. Well, that'll be 6. And we can do, get that just from integrating both sides of this again. And then as you can see, we could very easily prove by induction that the absolute value of f sub n of x is less than or equal to m times x sub n over n factorial. But now let's notice that that means that the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of the absolute value of f sub n of x will be less than or equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of m times x to the n over n factorial which in turn is equal to m times e to the x. But this thing is bound on the interval 0 to 1. So that means we've proved the convergence of the absolute value here, which means our series absolutely converges. But then absolute convergence implies regular convergence, so we have convergence in this case.
Okay, great. So now let's see if we can get a closed form for this sum. So we just showed that this boxed series converges. Now we wanna find a closed form for its value. Before we do that, I wanna work out some examples just so we have a feel for how this goes. So let's start with the simplest example, which is f of x equals one. Well, let's notice that that means f sub one of x is equal to x, and more generally, f sub n of x is equal to x to the n over n factorial. Because essentially what we're doing is just taking the antiderivative n times. But now that means our sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of f sub n of x is just equal to the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of x to the n over n factorial, which is exactly e to the x. So that would be our closed form in this special case. And I think this special case is probably a very motivating factor to the writing of this problem in the first place. So let's look at this other example and we have f of x equals e to the x. Okay, well let's notice that f sub one of x will be equal to the integral from zero to x of e to the t dt. You might want to say that that's equal to e to the x, but notice that it's e to the x minus e to the zero. In other words, it is e to the x minus one. But now we can keep going. So f sub two of x will be the integral from zero to x of e to the t minus one dt, which ends up being something like e to the x minus x. But let's notice that that means that we can inductively prove that f sub n of x will be e to the x minus, let's see what we have here, x to the n over n factorial. So something that looks like that. But then doing this calculation, we'll see that we get e to the x minus x minus one. So the minus x comes from integrating this one to t and evaluating at the endpoints. This minus one comes from evaluating e to the t at the endpoint of zero. And then next we could write f sub three as, well, I'll let you guys work it out, but it ends up being something like this, e to the x minus x squared over two factorial minus x minus one again. So that kind of builds what seems to be the formula f sub n of x, which is equal to e to the x minus, now we have the sum as m goes from zero up to n minus one of x to the m over m factorial. So something that looks like that. But now we can rewrite this e to the x as the sum as m goes from zero up to infinity of x to the m over m factorial using kind of the series expansion of e to the x. But this is gonna be all of the terms of e to the x minus the first n terms. So that'll leave us with the tail. In other words, we have something like this. The sum as m goes from n up to infinity of x to the m over m factorial. So that's our closed form for f sub n. But now the sum that we're interested in can be rewritten as the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of the sum as m goes from n up to infinity of x to the m over m factorial. But now we can switch the order of summation as follows. So this is gonna be the sum as m goes from zero up to infinity, and then the sum as n goes from zero up to m of x to the m over m factorial. So switching the sum is a little bit tricky, but I'll let you guys work that out if you need to. Okay, and then finally, now this inner sum only depends on n, whereas our terms only depend on m, and there are m plus one total terms. So that leaves me with the sum as m goes from zero to infinity of m plus one times x to the m over m factorial. And now it may not look like it, but we're actually pretty close to having a closed form of this, but we're running out of room. So let's maybe clean up from here down and then we'll finish this last example off before we look at our general solution. On the last board, we saw that the sum of our functions was equal to the sum as m goes from zero to infinity of m plus one over m factorial times x to the m. Now we're gonna get a closed form for this. 
this m plus one multiplier and then x to the m gives us some motivation that a derivative has been taken. In fact, this thing is exactly the derivative with respect to x of the sum as m goes from zero to infinity of x to the m plus one over m factorial. But if we take an x out of this, we can change that m plus one to an m and put the x out front. And then we've got a closed form for that sum. So this is exactly the derivative with respect to x of x times e to the x. But now we can use the product rule for this. That'll give us x times e to the x plus e to the x. And that's the closed form for the sum of these functions if we had started with e to the x. Okay, so now that being said, let's maybe look at the closed form for our general case where we just have any continuous function. So we just looked at a couple of examples where we found a closed form for the series starting with some special functions. We noticed in the first place it was pretty straightforward, but in the second case there was a lot of like work to be done. And so in order to do it in general, we should hope that there is a trick. And there is a trick, it's built into this recursive definition if instead of thinking of it as an integral, we think of it as a derivative. So let's maybe make the following observation. Fn plus one of x prime is equal to f sub n of x. That's just using the fundamental theorem of calculus on that equation. Okay, great. So now let's maybe set y equal to our sum. So the sum is n goes from zero to infinity of f sub n of x, and then use this derivative relationship to form a differential equation. So notice we can use this only if n is bigger than or equal to zero. So in other words, we can't take the derivative of f sub zero of x and get anything out of it. They, that might not even be differentiable. We only assumed it was continuous. So we'll extract that. So we have f of x and then plus our sum as n goes from one to infinity of f sub n of x. Now let's re-index that sum. So it starts at zero. That'll change this n to an n plus one. And now let's take the derivative. So we have y prime equals f prime of x plus the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of f sub n plus one prime, but that's f sub n of x. So I'll just rewrite it as f sub n of x, maybe noting that we use the fact that this is the n plus first function, the derivative of the n plus first function. But now we can write this as f prime plus y. And we have a first order linear differential equation for our function y. So let's notice that tells us y prime minus y is equal to f prime of x. This motivates an integrating factor of e to the minus x. So we'll multiply all parts of this by e to the minus x. And then we can see that the left-hand side is the product rule, essentially. And we'll notice that the left-hand side is a consequence of the product rule. So this is equal to e to the minus x times y prime. And then the right-hand side is e to the minus x times f of x. Okay, nice. But now we can take the antiderivative of both sides and we'll see that e to the minus x times y is equal to the integral from zero to x of e to the minus t and then we have f prime of t dt. I forgot a prime here. But now we can multiply both sides by e to the x and we're done. So in other words, we have y our closed form is equal to the integral from zero to x of e to the x minus t f prime of t dt. And that's our closed form for our series defined as follows. And that's a good place to stop.